We turn now to a major shift in how and when we look for breast cancer. A big announcement from the American Cancer Society instantly met with criticism, even outrage, from women who say they owe their lives to early detection. One of those women, our own Good Morning America co-anchor, Amy Robach. I'd be dead if I hadn't done that breast exam. This was Gerilyn Lucas 21 years ago, diagnosed with an aggressive form of breast cancer at just 27 years old and no prior family history. I found a lump. I didn't realize that breast cancer could happen to a woman in her 20s. I thought a woman had to be 40 to get breast cancer. She underwent a single mastectomy and extensive chemotherapy. She has been in remission ever since. Lucas argues that early detection was the key to saving her life. But just this week, the American Cancer Society making waves after they released new guidelines stating that women with an average risk of breast cancer can delay having a mammogram until the age of 45, five years later than its previous recommendation of 40, a message that outrages Lucas. I just think this is such a disservice. It's just adding to the confusion of when to get screened, when to get checked. I feel like we've made so much progress in genetics, in research, in treatment, why are we going backwards? The American Cancer Society says the new guidelines are based in evidence that mammography screening harms can include the risk of false positives in younger women. There's a changing risk as you get older, and these guidelines have given a roadmap that a woman can follow throughout her lifespan. Begin the discussion at 40, but if you haven't started by 45, everyone should begin screening. That's really the key take home message. There is a chance uh, small though it is, that a woman could die because she did not begin screening uh, earlier. It's that chance that is leading the experts at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center to not follow the ACS's new recommendations. The goal is not to decrease false positives, to decrease biopsies. The goal is to decrease deaths and that's why I think the, we are sticking with our guidelines, and that's why it um, concerns me that the American Cancer Society has changed theirs. Having a mammogram once a year, starting at age 40, is the best way we know of to decrease deaths from breast cancer in this country. Radiologist Dr. Carol Lee says that the guidelines could lead to confusion among patients and that the consequences could be dire. What I don't want to see is a reversal going backwards and seeing more deaths from breast cancer because fewer women get screened because they're confused about whether they need to have a mammogram or not. But Dr. Wender says no matter a woman's age, she should still be mindful about her breasts. Your risk of breast cancer actually starts uh, even earlier than 30. So we encourage all women to be aware of what their breasts feel like and not to delay. If they find something that they think might be a change, even if they're not sure, bring that the, to the attention of a clinician. And there are questions like, will insurance companies continue to cover mammograms for women under the age of 45? Cigna Health Insurance in a statement to ABC News saying, Cigna's breast cancer screening policy is 100% coverage for women age 40 and older. We have no plans to change our policy. Being wheeled into my mastectomy, <clears throat> you know, when I, the day after my 28th birthday, and just like realizing I would come out and there'd be a chunk of myself, I, I, I hadn't had any surgery. I didn't know what to do. Today, Geraldine Lucas is joined by a group of women. My daughter, Wendy, um, had breast cancer. She passed away in 2009. I say this is the face of young breast cancer. Their stories hit close to home for me. Now to a very, very brave moment, our dear colleague, Amy Robach. She's one of the uh, new staffers having a mammogram. In an effort to demystify the process of breast cancer screening, I was asked to have my first mammogram live on ABC. We're hearing the word stronger and you are being so strong today. Amy Robach, you're going to live have a mammogram. It's true. My reaction was visceral. No way, no how. She called me and said, they want me to do a mammogram live on TV. And I, I said, I don't think that's a good idea. It seems exploitive. You have no connection to cancer. It didn't seem authentic. The truth is, I feared it would look like I was trying to grab the limelight until my dear friend Robin Roberts said the words I needed to hear. 85% of women who have breast cancer have no family history. 
That statistic sent a wave from my head to my toes. I went in to see Robin, who is a breast cancer survivor and thriver, and she said, you know what, Amy? If one life is saved because of early detection, it's all worth it. I was 40 years old at the time, with no prior history of breast cancer in my family, and a life busy with work and kids. I had been putting it off for a year. I finally said yes. Amy is wrapping up her first mammogram here in the Mammo van. Little did I know that mammogram would change the course of my life. <laughs> a few days later, I received a call. Doctors wanted to do more tests and later a sonogram. The image was undeniable. It was there, a dark spot on the screen, a tumor about the size of a marble growing inside me. Those moments alone, scared in the doctor's office, detailed in my memoir better. I wanted to stay positive, so I kept telling myself that this was why some people argued against 40-year-olds getting mammograms. Excessive testing, false readings, unnecessary anxiety. It has to be benign. They immediately performed a biopsy. There was no escaping my new unreality. I had cancer. I will remember that phone call for the rest of my life. I knew it was bad news. And then she said, they found a tumor and it's malignant. I have decided to have a bilateral mastectomy. I'm going to be very aggressive. I'm 40 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm young and I hopefully have a lot of life ahead of me. The prognosis was chemotherapy. Eight rounds over six months. April 24th marked my final day of chemo. This is my final treatment. Today, I have made it my mission to raise awareness for early detection. It's a calling that Geraldine Lucas shares as well. She is now a mother of two and the author of a second book called Then Came Life, A Warrior in the Fight Against Breast Cancer. I'm the lucky one. I went on to have, I have a 16-year-old daughter and a nine-year-old son and they were born in the same hospital where I had my mastectomy. And I have a life now. I'm the lucky one. For Nightline, I'm Amy Robach in New York.